Hello, welcome to Flipped. So today we are on formula, stoichiometry and the mole concept. We'll begin with the formula portion. We'll start out with covalent compound, which is the chemical symbols to indicate the elements present. And the subscript, which is the bottom, the smaller number, will indicate how many atoms of the element is present. In this case, it's Cl2, which we know is chlorine atom. And we can see that there are two chlorine atoms here, okay, in this chlorine molecule. This one is H2O, which means there's two H atoms and one O atom. Okay, there's no subscript for one. So if you write it like this, H2O1, this is wrong. Okay, so if it, the subscript is one, we just leave it blank. Okay, it's uh, given that it will be one. Next, we'll move on to ionic compound, which is determined by the charges of its ions. In the case of, uh, let's say, um, NaCl, it's made out of Na plus and Cl minus. So we know that the plus charge will cancel out this negative charge. Okay, that's why it's neutral. NaCl, uh, ionic compound. In the case of uh, H2SO4, it's made up of H plus and SO4 2 minus. So this is an easy way to determine the ionic compound by this crossing method. So you can see that H plus has plus 1 charge, SO4 2 minus has a 2 minus charge. So what I do is I just push, push the number over. So this is 1, the 1 goes to SO4 2, SO4, and the 2 here goes to H plus. Okay, that's why it takes on H2, okay, from this 2 here, because it's a crossing method. The logic behind this is that there's two negative charge of SO4, okay, and I need two positive charge of H plus to neutralize it, okay, and that's why it's H2, SO4. Two negative charge is cancelled out by two positive charge, which is the H plus. In the case of uh, Ca, uh, calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, whole thing, okay, same thing, you can use the cross, the cross method, which means to put the 2 to the OH and the 1 to the CA2. CA, sorry. So what we get is CA1 here is not written, but it's given that it's 1. And OH, okay, bracket whole thing, 2. How this, the logic behind this is, is similar to um, the previous two. CA2 plus has 2 positive charge. I need 2 negative charge to cancel this uh, 2 positive charge. So I will give my um, OH, I need two OH of them, okay? Because if I write it down, it's like this, Ca2 plus OH minus, this is the first one, OH minus, okay? This one cancels out, so the net charge here is plus two, this is minus two. So it cancels out to zero, which is what we want, a, a neutral charge, okay? And that's why this bracket, it uh, refers to for this OH only, it's not for this Ca, okay? So it's bracket OH bracket two, this OH, there's two of it. OH, OH. Next, we move on to a list of uh, compounds that we have to know okay, in our syllabus. First of all, uh, we have to know water. It's H2O, carbon monoxide, and dioxide is CO and CO2, respectively. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, okay, all these are H2O2, N2. And uh, sodium hydroxide is Na plus and OH minus. Okay, so together they form NaOH. Ammonia is a gas, NH3. Okay, let's move on to the acid portion, which is HCl, which means this is H plus Cl minus, H plus NO3 minus, H plus SO4 2 minus. That's why there's a 2 here, because once we do the crossing, okay, this one takes on the 2. So it's H2 SO4. Uh, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, SO2, SO3, these are covalent compounds, so they, they don't have a charge. So it's a nitrogen dioxide, also a covalent compound. This one is organic chemistry. Okay, they are all organic compounds, I mean covalent compounds. Okay, so that's why there's a CH4, C2H6, C2H6O. Ethanoic acid is special, it's a actually um, covalent, it's an ionic compound. Okay, but we shorten it, we simplify it to C2H4O2. Next, we'll talk about chemical equations, which is really just reactants turning to products. Okay, let's give an example. In words, okay, we can write hydrogen plus oxygen giving us water. But in symbols, which is what we are more um, looking for, it's H2 plus O2 to give us H2O, but note the numbers here because they have to match. Okay, and you can see that the numbers represent the ratio of reactants to products. Okay, i.e. two H2 molecules and one O2 molecule. Okay, this should be a singular. They will form two H2 molecules. Okay, the number of atoms must be the same on both hands, on both sides. So it will form a valence equation. Okay, let's start off with uh, something uh, all the way from the beginning. If I just base on the words, right, how do we form a balance equation? 
we know that hydrogen plus oxygen give us water, hydrogen, oxygen, water. So I see that, oh, I have two oxygen here, okay? O, O gives us O2, right? But on the right-hand side, there's only one O. So what do I do? I just write a two in front of the H2O to now give us two O, right? Two times the O give us two O, right? But when I write this green two in, I realize that, hey, I have now four hydrogen. Why? Because this two uh, will multiply this H2 as well, giving us four hydrogen atoms. And on the left-hand side, there's only two hydrogen atoms. So that's not, not enough. What do we do? We just add a two in front of the original reactant. And now we can see that it's all balanced out because when we multiply it, two times H2 gives us four H's. Okay, there's four H's here. There's two oxygen atoms here. If I do it, do this one, I have to um, give to every them, right? Give to every one of them, the two. So this one has 4H and 2O now. And you can see that it's balanced because there's 4H, 2O on the left-hand side, and there's 4H and 2O on the right-hand side. So now it's a balanced equation. And of course, we have to include the state symbols, which is solid, liquid, gas, and aqueous. Okay, we'll talk about aqueous uh, next in the ionic equation. But for now, we are very familiar with solid, liquid, and gas. And in this case, we can assign them easily. H2 is a gas, O2 is a gas, H2O is liquid. Okay, and we write them as such. Next, we'll talk about ionic equation. It's really the same um, as chemical equation, but now it's only for ionic compounds. So recall that um, ionic compounds, there are few, right? So they have to form charges if you break them down into their ions. Okay, they cannot be applied for covalent compounds. Okay, but they are the same as chemical equation, but now we exclude spectator ions and focus on ions that have changed. Spectator, spectator ions means ions that do, they don't do anything. They just remain there, remain the same, right? Spectator, as in, uh, for example, a soccer stadium, they are spectators, right? They don't do anything. They don't do anything. They don't play the game. They just watch the show. So it's the same here. Spectator ions just means that they don't change throughout the whole reaction. Let's give an example. In the case of a CaCO3, this is solid, okay, so we just write it down first. And this is a uh, HNO3, which is nitric acid, aqueous. And then this is a uh, calcium nitrate, aqueous, plus carbon dioxide gas, H2O liquid. Okay, the first rule is to change all the aqueous compounds to ions. Okay, so you can see that these are my aqueous compounds, this one and this one, all right? Because there's AQ here, means it's aqueous. And I know that this uh, power, sorry, this, um, number in front, I have to give it to everybody. So I have to give it to 2H, and I have to give it to NO3, because this is H+, plus, this is NO3-, minus. this is Ca2+, plus, this is uh, NO3-. minus. Okay, so this one, this uh, number in front, I have to give to H and NO3, which will result in this guy. Okay, let me change color. Which will result in uh, this 2H2, 2H+, plus, sorry, and 2 NO3-, minus, because once I give the power, the, sorry, the number in front to both of them, I'll result in this. Similarly, this one, I have to, okay, break it down into just ions. Ca2 plus is just here. This is Ca2 plus. And NO3, I cannot just write NO3 minus because there's two of them here. So I have to write two NO3 minus. Makes sense, right? And then, so when I've, after I've changed all the equals compounds to ions, the rest of the states, I remain untouched. So what do I mean? I just copy them back. So CaCO3, remains as CaCO3, carbon dioxide remains as carbon dioxide, H2O remains as H2O liquid. Now the next step, okay, and it's the final step, is to cancel all the ions that appear on both sides. In the case, okay, let's just look at the ions here, which is the all the underlying ones, because all these remain unchanged, so they just remain there. So I cancel ions that remain on both sides. Which one do you think remains on both sides? You can see that two NO3- minus remains on both sides, means they don't change, so just try them out. And these are called spectator ions because left-hand side to right-hand side, reactants to product, they don't do anything. They just remain as the same charge. Okay, and they are called spectator ions. They just don't do anything. They just watch the show. So once I've cancelled out the ions that are spectators, okay, I rewrite my equation such that I ignore them. And now what I have, what I have is CaCO3 solid plus 2H plus aqueous. Okay, just bring it down. And Ca2 plus aqueous giving us CO uh, plus CO2 and H2 will just copy down. And you can see that the charges must be balanced at the end of the whole ionic equation. Because you can see that there's 2H plus here and there's one Ca2 plus. So in the case, I have uh, H plus and H plus. And this one is Ca2 plus. Okay, so 1 plus 1 
will give me a net of plus 2 charge, which will equal to this plus 2 charge on the right hand side. Okay, so it's the same as math, right? If I write 5 plus 1, okay, it's 6, right? Left hand side must be 6, right hand side must be 6 as well. And this is what we call balance. Okay, but now we're just talking about charges, but it works the same way. Okay, and that'll be all for the formula portion of this chapter.